into the main content of my speech, I would like to share with you a feeling of positivity, a feeling of motivation that I have each morning that I wake up. Have you ever thought about the fact that our very existence in the here and now is truly a miracle? I mean, if you think about it, what are the chances that life happens to be on Earth? Among the trillions of stars and planets, floating lifelessly in the dark and cold universe? And what are the odds that from the earliest life form that as we know it, that existed nearly four billion years ago on Earth? There come our ancestors who gave birth to our grandparents, who gave birth to our parents, and here we are, in the here and now, carrying the genetic, genetic codes that have been perfected through generations. I hope that you share this feeling of motivation with me, and I feel blessed. Now, before you finish pondering on the thing that I just shared, there's also an interesting fact that I would like to mention. Now, on Earth, only human among the nine million living species have languages of complete structure I mean, if you think about it, it is hard to imagine a world with our languages. It's like we'd be, our thoughts would be locked in a cage, unable to get out. And with our languages, we would not be even able to think at all. So it is worth considering, right? So another reason to feel blessed, as we as human have language as an instrument for communication. And so, if we talk about language, what is language? Now, according to Britannica, an online encyclopedia on human knowledge, language is defined as a system of spoken, written, and signed symbols used by humans to express themselves. And there are thousands of languages available in the world and dozens of them are considered the most popular. Now in the scope of my speech, I would like to mention and talk about the languages that are unique to countries, territories and peoples such as English, Vietnamese, Russian, Arabic, Chinese, German, you name it. Now, have you ever thought that if language is a tool for communication and understanding between people, would it be much more convenient if in the world there is only one language existing? Well, actually, this idea crossed the mind of many linguists in the past. And in 19, I'm sorry, in 1887, Esperanto was given birth as a language hoped to be and universal language. And here we are in 2022. Esperanto is known by only a few million people on Earth, not to mention to be spoken regularly. So it failed. What can be explained for the failure of Esperanto and other languages of the same objective? Now, it brings us to the questions to be pondered at the first place. Why are there so many languages on Earth? You know, thousands of languages on Earth, they date back about five or six thousands of years through the empires, the religions, the conquests, the trade, and of course, global communication in modern times. And would Esperanto and a single language be able, be enough to cover, to tell us about the history of a nation itself? I guess it is very unlikely. But then someone would ask, why do we have to be so focused on history? We are living in the here and now, and all we need to do is talk about the future and come up with the most practical and useful application for future communication. So why uh, wouldn't we have just only one language? But then be reminded that as I speak today, many scientists, the best of their kinds in the world, are still trying to explain the beginning of life in the universe. 
you must be familiar with the Big Bang Theory. So would it be silly or do they have too much free time to spend to look into something that dates too far back in the course of history? I guess the answer would be no for a lot of us. So, uh, if language is a means of communication and it represents the history of culture of a nation or a people, uh, would we call someone who speaks multiple languages a multicultured individual? Or the bigger question is, do languages or does knowing some languages influence on the way we view the world? Now I'm going to give you some examples that might get us closer to the answer. Now imagine that I had a wife. Uh, one morning uh, when I wake up, she asked, Ming, why did you come home so late last night? And I said in English, well, I went out with a friend. Well, I was trying to negate what my wife was really trying to know because I did not specify the gender of that friend. Is it a female friend or a male friend? Because simply English allows me to do so. However, in German or in French, in most cases, I do not have that privilege. These languages require you to identify the gender of the subjects or objects that you talk about. So it is necessary in German or French that I have to mention, did I go out with a female friend or a male friend? Now, another example. I'm trying to ask a girl out. I am a straightforward person and I ask her, uh, do you have a boyfriend? And she said in English, actually there are a, a number of options for her to respond in English herself. I have a boyfriend, I had a boyfriend, I have not had a boyfriend ever. So that is a seriously important indication for me to decide to continue approaching her or to walk away. <laughs> However, in Chinese, though it is not recommended, but uh, you can use a verb without identifying the tense of that verb, that that would leave me in confusion. Uh, another example that indicates that there are a number of cultural viewpoints different in within one language alone. Now in English, it is commonly seen that uh, children call their parents as mom and dad. But some people would think that calling their parents by their first names would strengthen the bone and closeness between family members. So what do you think about that? So uh, going back to the questions, do languages affect on the way we view the world? Uh, actually, uh, an American linguist, Benjamin Lee Wolf, believed this was true, and he came up with the so-called Sapir-Wolf hypothesis in 1940. Uh, that hypothesis has not been proved completely by anyone. However, I will now save you the trouble from, uh, you know, hypothesis about languages and people. Now let's talk about chicken and eggs. It brings us to the classic question, was it the chicken or the egg that came first? Well, according to a study uh, in the fossils of dinosaurs and embryos, it was the egg that came first. Now, if you think about language and people, which came first? Scientifically and logically speaking, people came first because we are the creator of languages. However, some believers in aliens and in uh, higher forms of existence might disagree. Now, to find out, was it language that influenced on us? Um, I had this observation that not many people decided to learn a language solely to change their mindset. And not every speaker of English 
go well with the American or British lifestyle. But if you yourself decide to raise the role of languages in your life to new heights, you begin to have interesting observations. For example, for me, Chinese. I spent some time studying Chinese and I realized that Chinese characters are not based on any set of alphabet. They are simply the simplified uh, drawings of real objects. So when I think about Chinese, I think about the tenderness and Chinese people's attention to details. And when someone talked to me about the fact that French is the language of love, I did some digging and it turned out that France is considered as a birthplace for love, pure connection between two people without the need for marriage. What do you think about that? And so, um, my mother, unlike other members of my family, is a big fan of Indian drama. But it does not mean that she is into the Indian culture or nor she wants to move to India to live for good. So it is up to us to, be Im to immerse ourselves in the culture that language represents and manifests. Now some parents told me, as I am an educator, they are worried that language can be somehow negative to their children. To them I said, it is impossible to stop the flow of languages and cultures to the youngsters that we see today in this modern world. You see, language will continue to form and develop, and some words that we do not see in the dictionary today might exist in the Oxford English Dictionary tomorrow. For example, the word YOLO, you only live once. Not until 2016, that phrase was added to the Oxford English Dictionary. So language will continue to evolve, to manifest, to represent, and even to modify cultures. But it is up to us to be consumed by languages or to be more selective and find the key in the pool of knowledge, including language, to break free from the prison of mind if there is any. And that has been what I have to share with you today. Thank you for your attention.